Hey everybody, Josh here from Shama, and right now I'm making some Trail Star Copperhead Edition. And by and large, it's almost the same amount of work as making your regular Trail Star Maximus, except we have some different colors. We've got a whole bunch of different highlights, and we're completely set up for everything being black on the lacing system. So I got to go through and I'm individually hand cutting these pieces because they're in such small batches. It's not worth it to do the automated cutting and all that. So that's kind of what makes it special. So I've got some uh, Coyote Marpat hook and loop we're going to call copper. Um, this is oftentimes used with a lot of like military uh, uh, products and stuff like that. So I'm going to cut for a few of these here and I got to cut a few different things to trim these sandals out just right. So I have got a size 11 to make here. So 11, um, uh, three and five eighths. Oops, I'm coming from the other direction. Should be coming from over here. Three and five eighths. So hand cutting those. Three and three eighths. Cut these guys. Okay, so we got six. Okay, now I can switch to the hook. Start at the bottom. So we got three inches. So the, the three quarter inch was easy because they actually sell this color in three quarter inch, but the five eighths, like you can get any width you want if it's black. But when you go into these different colors, then you have to start cutting stuff down. So I already took these two boxes here. It's kind of like a cooking show. You know, everything gets handed to you in a bucket. I spent like a long time cutting all this hook and loop down to five eighths of an inch so it would fit on the four foot strap. So I'm gonna cut that now. I'm gonna find the end of it. Here's an end. Okay, five eighths. All right, the hook is two and a half on the six, size six here. Two and a half, two and a half. So yeah, it's all the little details of switching over and changing over that really kind of draws out the production process. So I've cut all my hook and loop, but now I need to start collecting some of the other parts for these sandals. I need to get some uh, little bits of webbing uh, in the Coyote Marpat color, so we'll go do that. We'll do that on the hot cutter. Two and a quarter. So the next step is we need to tack all the loops on. We got to tack three quarter inch loops, five eighths inch loops onto the posts. And at this stage, we just want to make sure we keep it organized. Otherwise, we'll run into some problems. And we will not have the right number of parts. So since they look very similar, they're all Y posts, we just gotta keep it organized. And so that's why I'm laying them out each direction. And I'm gonna go through now and tack them. I'm gonna tack the 5 8 inch strap on first. And here's another one of those little details. So this is a one inch piece of webbing. I wanted, we use 3 quarter and 5 8 so I'm gonna actually have to fold this material to make it match, which it does just fine but I've got to go through that extra little step and it's kind of a pain, but you know, that's what you got to do if you want pretty accents like so. Make it fit in that loop. Yes, this is a hassle, but we want to make sure these copperheads have all of their cool little accents so everyone's really happy. Funny thing is, this is actually TK's idea. He's always like kind of messing around with different colored threads and little details. He's definitely more artistic than I am. And he came up with these and I was like, oh, that's really cool. He's like, oh, I was just doing whatever. I'm like, yeah, we should definitely make those. Those are awesome. And so that's how the, the copperhead was born. And then my idea was to kind of push it a little bit and make sure that there were a lot of details on it besides just the sewing. 
All right, and this is probably the step that I have been least looking forward to, which is re-threading the sewing machine with the uh, copper colored thread. But it has to be done, so I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna start with my bobbin, and we gotta also unwind the bobbins. So this kind of thing is just, it's not the end of the world, it's just a hassle, because everything, like I was saying, is set up for a black thread, and it's all easy, everything's easy there, but here you gotta actually earn your money a little bit, so to speak. This is the easy one. It's just the the thread for the bobbin. Super straightforward. Goes through a couple holes and a tension plate disc, and then it's going to go on to the bobbin. And this is how we actually wind the bobbin or get the. We used to tie it, but there's a much faster way. You just put it through the middle and squish it down. You can hold a little tension now. You can wind it a few times. Bam. All right, now you got your tension, cut the thread off, and now we gotta get the, the actual thread that's feeding the machine. And do the tension, and we'll see if I can remember all the places it goes. It's a lot more complicated on, on this side of the machine. I'm doing pretty good so far. I think I remember all this. And then we're gonna go through here. And then we're gonna go down the machine. And I'm gonna go around this way. I'm gonna go over this little tensioner spring, back over that loop, and press down to release the tension. Go through that little holder. And each one of these little holes or loops or holders adds just a tiny bit of tension to the, the thread. And at the end, when it's all said and done, you really want the tension between the bobbin underneath, which is on the bottom side, to be equal to the tension on the top. And you can make little adjustments here, there, depending on where you want the knot in the material to be. But by and large, it's supposed to be pretty balanced. So all these little holes look like they're just there for fun, but it, they actually serve a purpose of giving just the right amount of tension. And so if you're ever having trouble sewing, you're like, why is it not working right? Make sure that the thread is fed through all the little spaces. So here I go. All right, this next step, we have to actually suede the posts. This is something we do with all of the posts here. And the tr these ones are no different, but now we've got the thread set up, so it's gonna look really cool when we do it. We're gonna see, the neat thing is we're gonna see the stitching. And that means if we're gonna see it, we should probably do a good job with it. So we want it to be pretty. And we're gonna start back here. All right, let's see how this goes. Cool, I like this because like, normally you don't really see the stitch that, I mean, it's there, you see it, but you see it laying down underneath and it kind of pops a little bit. Okay, and this part I have to push down. There we go. All right, see how we're doing. Looking good. And we're gonna do once there and back. Okay, and we'll cut it, see how we look. Cool, 
I like it. I like the way they look. Very nice and clean. There we go. So we made an insole post. I have to suede 11 more of these posts and then I can start sewing uh, the forefoot strap and the outsole post and then we can put the sandal together. Okay, so now I'm making the outsoles and I've got my hook in my loop, my suede post, and here I go, just like a standard trail star. Sandwich this material here, hook and the loop, and the ultra suede, and the post, okay? And this is gonna look really cool when it's done. hook. So it kind of wasn't quite as straight as I wanted it to be. There we go. That, that, there we go. We do a little bit of a figure eight pattern here with all of our hook in our loop keep the ends buttoned down and to give strength to the strap right across the middle. Have a home run. And then lock stitch, bam. Okay, and this is gonna look really cool. All these colors are gonna pop here. Trim the end of the strap. Take a look at it. Looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Stitching is really popping and that's kind of the whole point of what we're doing with these. Um, all right, I'm gonna go through each of these boxes and throw the out, sew the outsole strap so I'll come back through and sew the forefoot strap after that. Okay, so we're on to the last step which is to make the forefoot strap. And so one of the things that we're gonna do here, normally we just sew the hook and the loop onto the end of the forefoot strap and that's enough. Um, but in this case, we're gonna gussy it up. We're gonna give it a little detail and run that deal, detail the length of the strap. So I'm gonna do that as I attach the hook and loop. So we'll start here, because we want that nice thread detail to make this thing pop. And look, give it that classic threaded look. So here we go. All right, gonna go down this way. And what I'm gonna do, I think I'm just gonna follow this pattern all the way down the edge of the strap. I'm just gonna go really slowly and carefully. I want it to look nice. Just taking my time. I'm gonna get down here as far as I can. Okay, that's probably about as far as I can go before it bunches up into. Oops. All right, so we're at the last step. Uh, uh, we're just gonna assemble the lacing system now into, or install it into the sole. So we had the soles already made and countersunk, and they look really good. Uh, the eight millimeter uh, Vibram Nuflex in the oak color, and we've got, this one's got a grip top footbed. And you know, the cool thing is the Trail Star, just like the Elite Lacing System, it's what we call modular. So you can like swap parts in and out. All you need is a pair of pliers to do this, which I think is really neat because most footwear you're ever gonna have is gonna require you to throw it away in order to you know fix it, right? Um, but the way we've designed our sandals is that everything can kind of go together with a pair of pliers. So if a part were to wear out or suppose your lacing system is looking good and, and um, 
but you're, you've like worn through your, your sandals, the sole, just get a new sole. So why throw it away when you can just repair it? And you can do it yourself at home. So I'm just pulling the plugs, the posts through. Pretty easy. Right now I've got the insole post installed. I'm gonna install the outsole post like so. And we got that one. We have got this guy right here. And they're facing the right direction. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is install the four foot straps. First thing we're gonna do, pull this through the middle. Go, it's going the right direction. Okay, this four foot strap is now going to work over the top of the sole here. Kind of guess what somebody's toe roughly is going to look like in terms of size. Actually, that's a little big, I think. Pull that back just a hair. Got the sole anchor installed and. Pull the strap through. Okay, those are both in there looking good. Okay, so I'm going through and installing the forefoot strap. And just a reminder to everyone, I don't know why this is the case, but we've even seen people make videos that they didn't understand that the, the forefoot uh, strap section of the Trail Star is adjustable. It's fully adjustable. That's like why we made it so that you could have control over the front of your sandal. So all of these parts, you can do big adjustments by pulling the anchors out, or you can just make little adjustments. It's totally customizable, fully adjustable, and we don't want you to forget that part. That's kind of the, what makes it so great. All right, so if I suppose wanted to make a little adjustment, I could just hold my foot there, and wiggle it a little bit and it'll draw a little bit through there if I wanted to make a minor adjustment. Okay, I'm going to go through the insole post now. Through the outsole post. I'm going to close the hook and loop. Close the hook and loop. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. I love the stitching came out really nice. All the little copper highlights and a reminder of the extra little touches that we went through and cut the, cut the, the hook and loop down to 5 8 so you get those little details all throughout. Really cool sandal. Uh, not only is this a great sandal in general, the, the Trail Star Maximus has just been awesome, but uh, in these cool copper highlights it's even more stylish than ever. So hope you enjoyed this and hope you go out and get yourself a pair and hit the trail. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel for more weekly content. And make sure to click the bell so that you'll be notified every time we post something new.